The Gifted season finale, Extraction, and X-Roads. A two-hour season finale is always pretty fun to watch, and I think this was definitely a great two-parter. Um, the first one was, of course, like the big failed mission, ultimately, and then the second episode kind of ends with a pretty interesting division between our main characters, so I, I really enjoyed that by the end, but I think both episodes were really good. I'm curious to see where they're gonna go uh, villain-wise, you know, going into season two, because we still have Jace, but not only is he possibly, you know, I, I was curious if they were gonna pull off a thing at the last second, like suddenly, you know, Campbell's actually a mutant in disguise the whole time, but that doesn't, you know, seem to be the case. But I was like, all right, well, if he's officially dead, then we have Jace, and that means they have to bring in someone else because it's just Jace, and he quit. So he pretty much has, you know, no power. So I'm very curious where we're going uh, with the villains into uh, season two, but I'm definitely excited for that. They touched a lot on uh, Lorna and her being, you know, Magneto's daughter, which of course they don't actually say the name or anything, but there's, you know, a lot of stuff in there. They have like the little emblem where Joe's like, oh, specific colors and stuff like that. But I was like, all right, I'm curious where this is headed uh, for these characters. And it, you know, of course seemed like even from the promo that, you know, like Polaris as the mutant was going to be kind of the big focal point of, you know, this finale. And I would certainly say that she was, especially, of course, going into the uh, second part. But all around, I thought it was really cool. I liked the way that they had the characters kind of split up. We have the division between um, Andy and Lauren. So I, I thought it was really cool the way that all of that kind of played out. And it was just like, all right, well, you know, like I said, by the end, there's a couple of people kind of taken off. Like, well, we need to kind of fight this way because of survival. And it was certainly going... Uh, the Magneto route, which I thought was uh, very interesting, and of course they actually use uh, Polaris to do it, which I was like, they're going, you know, a full Magneto route, so I thought that was actually kind of fun, but I like the way they handled it, you know, the whole episode, or at least, you know, the first part, like I said, them going through this mission, and they're dealing with uh, the Frost triplets, and it's like, all right, well, they're dealing with them, they don't really trust them, they're kind of trying to play the little mind game like all right what's gonna happen here we see them actually do it for two of the characters which that i kind of loved because they show how they were trying to you know manipulate the characters to kind of join their side and they were doing it to both polaris and blink and it was like you know blink you know when they have that conversation she's like yeah they tried that on me too like you know the we're not so different tactics and stuff so you could see that it wasn't working on her but polaris is the one who's like you know maybe they aren't too wrong and she knows that she's the one you know much like uh, the stuff for cuckoos um she's the one who kind of wants to push a little bit harder to you know kind of get things done so i thought it was interesting where we got to see that kind of play out and i guess that was you know kind of that bit of foreshadowing because i thought it was just going to be oh she goes through and ultimately she takes on the plane and then it would just be really messed up between the you know between the crew i didn't think that she would do that and then actually you know, just leave them, and it's like, you know, when they come in at the end, I kind of like that, where it's like, you know, we're not coming to take anybody away or whatever, like, the people who we're here for already know that we're here for them, and I thought that was kind of cool, and we see a couple of people get up, so I was like, all right, well, that's interesting, and of course, you know, Andy ends up leaving with them at the end, but I like the way it played out, I thought the action was fairly decent for this episode, we have, you know, everyone being attacked at the base, so of course, they destroy the base by the end, end of the season, so that was something, but the way everything was kind of paced out, I thought was really good. And the way they handled um, Jace as a character, I actually thought was pretty funny by the end because it was like, he goes through this whole process. He's uh, tracking down, um, you know, the kid's grandmother and stuff. And it's like, okay, so they're using the hounds on them. And then he's, you know, tracking her down. And it's like, all right, well, now we have two paths, one for the grandmother, one for the rest of the Strucker family. So it's like, well, we'll chase them down because, of course, that's going to lead us to uh, the mutant underground so he's going through and i'm like oh he's actually like getting a lot done in this episode and then you know it comes down to the end and it fails and then he's kind of the scapegoat and his you know his boss is like you know i told you to do this for the safety of our people and the mutants that we had under our control and i was like wow that sucks this is like the biggest break he's had the whole season and it was you know an absolute failure and he's being blamed for all of it so i was like well that really sucks for him, and like I said, he ends up quitting, so I'm very curious where they're headed with his character for that element, what they're going to be doing as far as bringing in a secondary villain, which I, I think should be pretty entertaining, and it'll be interesting, because I, I, unless they do reveal that somebody was actually a mutant, and somehow, you know, Campbell ends up surviving, he's done for, and it kind of sucks, because it's like, man, I feel like, even with this whole season, I feel like we didn't get enough of his character, because I liked how he was as sort of this calculating guy, but ultimately... He was just, you know, a human character. And I don't know if they're going to do that where they bring in, like, 
a mutant villain, and that could be what they're kind of building up with, uh, you know, Polaris, but I don't think they're going to kind of go, like, the full Magneto route where they're actually fighting each other, um, especially considering the fact that Polaris is, of course, having a child, so I don't know how they're going to kind of play off of that element. Plus, she's even more powerful uh, with the baby, so there's nothing that anyone could even really do against her. So I'm super curious how that's going to end up playing out once we get to season two, but the way they kind of tease it with, like, the giant M that was reminiscent of some stuff I've seen with Magneto, so I was like, okay, that's that's pretty interesting. So really enjoyed what we got for this episode. Um, I feel like, you know, it was just a lot of chaos where it was like, all right, we got this plan, let's go through this. Definitely, like I said, some cool moments and... Um, you know, some relationship stuff, some relationships kind of falling apart, some officially building up. I guess they're, you know, they've been teasing it since the beginning of the season, but we have Blink and uh, Thunderbird, they end up together. So I thought that was pretty cool. I was like, all right, you know, they have their kiss and yeah, sure. Yeah, they kind of been teasing that the whole time. But just going through with like the first failed plan and I was honestly kind of curious what they were going to do with the stuff for Cuckoos because you know with them being the characters that they are once the mission failed i was like are they just gonna mind control them to force them you know to finish the mission i honestly thought that would probably be like the second whole episode or something because i was like as pissed off as they are they might just go for that just like screw it we're just gonna mind control you guys and force you to you know finish the mission because they didn't care about the kids it was just like we need to get this done we need to kill this person and that's all there is to it so I was kind of worried going in there, but, you know, they were like, all right, they were, they were just mad, but they didn't, you know, mind control the rest of the team. They were just like, all right, we got Polaris, let's just use her, have her drop this plane and everything will be fine. So I like the way it was handled. Like I said, the um, Sentinel service is actually attacking the main base, completely destroying it, you know, forces them to have a new location for season two, which is pretty cool. They get to a place called J. Kirby's, which I have to assume is a reference. Um, but I, I just thought that was pretty interesting. It was like the way it was all handled and then... You know, Polaris does come in at the end with one of the um, cuckoos. And it's like, all right, well, we're here to take whoever wants to come with this. And that's just how it is. So, you know, we have a, a family split up with, you know, when Andy takes off. And we have, of course, another family split up with Polaris being the leader of, like, this, you know, basically rebuilding the Hellfire Club. So, should be fun. Uh, should be very fun season two. I'm definitely looking forward to who they end up adding into the show. Definitely, like I said, I think my main thing is... I'm super curious what they're going to do for the villain route because with Jace having left his position, he's no longer that central focus as a villain. And then, of course, Campbell's been killed off. So they still have, you know, at least the um, the concept of what they can use to blend, you know, mutant powers like they've done the blending. Now they need to figure out how to suppress the power. So that's the part that they were having trouble with. And the I think they announced that like in the beginning of the first uh, part of this. So. That could be something that comes back where there's an actual character that stole certain files or something because it doesn't really come up it's just like yeah we are either missing this or we just don't know this and it was like okay well you need to look a little harder and then that doesn't really come up later so i think they might have a full storyline with like a, a new character coming in for that but all in all i think it was a pretty cool season finale like i said of course looking forward to season two this is a really fun show um, definitely want to know what you guys thought about this two-parter, so please comment below, let me know your favorite parts about it, least favorite parts about it, and naturally going into season two, I would love to know what you guys want to see from our hero characters, um, villain characters, if you guys want to see them introduce new mutants, um, who do you guys want to see? Naturally, I don't think we're going to get any of, like, the huge names, because, you know, they're going to save them for the movies, so... I just don't think we're going to get that. Unfortunately, I would love to see them bring in, even if it's like a lesser known character and stuff like that, because uh, they do make a reference to like a billionaire person who's like also a mutant. Um, the first person I thought of was actually Angel, and it's like, that could be it, because they could, depending on how they're doing the storyline, it's like, he could be like Archangel at this point, you know, some other stuff going on there, how they want to move some things around, um, but I kind of doubt that's who it was, but I'm very curious what they're going to be doing as far as both heroes and villains going into season two. But like I said, we'll definitely love to know um, if you guys have predictions so far. I would love to know your predictions and theories for what we're going to get for season two. But certainly want to know just what you guys want to see for season two as far as characters, both heroes and villains. Um, lesser known characters that you guys think we could potentially get. I would love to know your guesses on that because they're using characters that exist. Like, you know, Polaris is a character that exists, you know, within the X-Men. She's one of the main characters in... Um, wolverine in the x-men the animated series um she's one of the main characters in that show so it's like oh you know and that's i think i mentioned that like in the beginning of the series like that's how i know who her character is is from that x-men cartoon which is like the last x-men cartoon that was made um 
So I, I would like to see them bring in some more lesser known characters. That would actually be kind of cool. But we'd love to know which characters you guys would like to see and just what you guys want to see in general. And like I said, I definitely want to know what you guys thought about this finale. So please comment below. Let me know. And thanks for watching.